I bought a lot of four broken monitors and repaired them all. In this video, I'll show you the most common faults that can occur with a television or monitor. I needed a monitor for a project I'm working on and you've probably already seen it on Instagram. And instead of buying a working one, I bought a lot of four broken monitors. Three are the same and the other is a different model, but all had faults. It should be clarified that if a monitor or television has a cracked or broken display, there is nothing to do but get the entire display replacement. But since this was not the case with these monitors, we can try to repair them all. There are basically three main components in any monitor or television, the power supply, the board, and the display. And depending on what the monitor does, we can imagine where the fault comes from. The first monitor did nothing. It didn't even turn on the standby light, so I assumed it had a problem with the power supply. I carefully disassembled the monitor. In this case, it didn't have screws, but everything was through a system of fittings. After disassembly, I disconnected the display and inspected the board and power supply. The board is the small one from where the flex cable comes out that is connected to the display and the power supply is the big one. You'll notice because it always has a design similar to this one. Now there are several reasons why a power supply can get damaged, but almost always the components that break are the same. To start, let's check if the fuse isn't broken. The fuse can be a small glass tube, or in some cases it can be like this one, a small plastic cylinder. Anyway, to check if it's burned out, we need to set our multimeter to continuity in that mode where if we touch the tips, you hear a little noise. And we put one tip on each side of the fuse. If it sounds, then the fuse is not burned out. Having ruled out the fuse, we start to observe the power supply. For example, the time I showed you how to repair washing machines. The board had some swept tracks as seen here. You can also look for this on the board. And if you don't find anything related, it's very likely uh, a capacitor. Capacitors are those metallic cylinders you see. And you should check if they are swollen. This power supply had several, so what I did was remove them, taking a picture beforehand. To remember how they were and look for a replacement. We simply see that on one side it says the voltage and the farads. With those same values we buy an identical one and then we solder it back just as the original was. Once changed we check again and for example in this monitor it was just that so it started working again. The other monitor would turn on the standby light but nothing could be seen which could indicate that it's either the board or the display. To check if it was the board, I did the following. With the light on, which tells me it's turned on, I turned on my cell phone flashlight and shone it from the side. There was an image, a stain or something on the surface. That tells us that the board is working as it is sending the image, but there is a failure in the display. I disassembled everything again just like before, but this time I began disassembling the screen itself. The screen is composed of the display on one side and the backlight on the other. These monitors are liquid crystal display, so they are illuminated by small light tubes. Since I already knew that the display was working because the image was visible, the problem was that this backlight was not working. And when I finished disassembling everything, I checked the tubes and yes, they were broken. Fixing them is simple. We just have to change the light tube or find a light source that serves us. And this is what I did. Since the spare parts for those light tubes were hard to get, I removed the two tubes it had, and in the place where they were located, I placed a LED strip. It's a normal LED strip with 550 chips and 12 volts. The important thing is that the light from the LEDs goes in the same direction as the one that was in the original tubes. I reassembled the screen and now needed to power the LED, so I simply observed. And as you see in the source on the cable that comes out from the source to the board, there are several indications and among them one that says GND and 12 volts. So in the one that says 12 volts, I connected the positive cable or the red one from the two LED strips and in the ground, the negative cable or the black one Finally, I reassembled the entire monitor and we already had an image. Although, as you can see, this monitor is very old 
and the years have taken their toll. It has a line of dead pixels that we can't repair, and it also has a black spot. We can remove that spot by scratching the screen with our fingernail force and a lot of patience. The third monitor even made me feel a bit sorry. The monitor would turn on, but a second after displaying the image, it would turn off. Again, I started to disassemble it, and when I opened it, I realized that it had already been disassembled before, and when I disassembled it a bit more, I see that inside the monitor they had left an ultraviolet light tube. I don't know, something ridiculous. And this is the explanation. The monitors have a system that detects if any light tube has burned out, and if this happens, they turn off to protect themselves. In this monitor, one of the tubes burned out and far from replacing it with an original spare, they put an ultraviolet tube inside the monitor. This is so that the ultraviolet tube consumes energy and simulates that we replace the original tube even though we didn't. Obviously, this is not only bad for the monitor, but it is not being illuminated correctly, leaving us with dark parts, surely. What I did was directly remove the burnt tube and put in an original spare, as it should be. And I took this spare from the other monitor that I fixed before, since as it only had one of the two tubes burnt out, it served me to put it in the other one. We put everything back together, and that's it. Since it now had the correct energy consumption, it was working, and it wasn't turning off. And the last one is the best of all. It left me totally amazed. When I bought the monitor, the seller told me the image looks very bad. You can hardly see it, and the buttons don't work. So I thought, well, it must have some problem with the display, and I will have to change the button panel when I turned it on. Obviously, you could hardly see anything, super dark, everything, but when I went to touch the buttons, I was left with my mouth open. When you press something, it came out on the screen, OSB lock, but they worked. This mode is used. When the monitor is on display, in this way, they centered the button so that it cannot be turned off, turned on, or change the image, but deactivating it is super easy. We hold down the menu button for about 10 seconds until it says OSB unlocked, and that's it. I entered the menu and realized that the brightness, contrast, and gamma were at zero. So I simply raised it, and the monitor was working perfectly. In conclusion, these are four different failures that can be found, and in fact, they are the most common and are the ones that you will encounter most frequently. And I know many will ask me how much I paid for the monitors and how I got them. I paid around between 1,000 and 1,500 pesos each, about seven or eight dollars. And I got them by searching on Mercado Libre, simply as a hobby or because I like it, like people who look at cars or, well, I look at broken things. That's how I got the broken monitors. I hope you liked and found the video useful. If you've made it this far, consider joining my Patreon page. With a monthly contribution, you can access exclusive content, support the channel, and watch the videos before they're on YouTube. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, don't forget to comment and subscribe, and see you in the next one.